continuing to move towards getting this cassette transport out so that we can change belts. Um, these two sockets here are the record and playback head on one hand and race head on the other. Not actually sure which is which. I did look, but I'll remind myself. You can clearly see that one head has got bearing wires and one has got grey. There's also a how many cable? One, two, three, four. Yeah, eight pin cable here, so just pulling the plug and that comes away from a header on this little printed circuit board in the back of the transport. I know it's a bit small in the picture, but I hope you can see there's a pulley here with a magnet. That's attached to the mechanical counter here and there's a very thin belt you can see I'm pulling at it there and that's running out of the side of the transport and onto the pulley so you know that's how the the turning of the take up reel is turning this pulley this pulley is advancing the mechanical counter and that rotating magnet is I suppose the right verb is inducing a current and a little transistor off to the side there so exactly sure what the purpose of that is given that it's a mechanical counter um, you would normally see like a rotating magnet like that um, where it's a digital counter and the whole effect between the magnet and the transistor is how the system is keeping track of where the tape is. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any advanced features like rehearsal and so on. There aren't. Maybe this is a part that features in two models, one with a mechanical counter and one with a digital one. That's a bit of a mystery to me. There's a transistor there, so maybe it is doing something. Anyway, I'm not sure, but in any case, you definitely need to unhook that rubber belt there. You can also see that the pitch control is running from this board to this variable resistor here. So we're going to need to detach that to get the transport all the way out. So I'll just move the camera so it's right at the front and we'll look at taking off the nut and washer that's holding that in place as well as the screws that are mounting this transport to the metal chassis in the front. Okay, so pitch control. Okay. That wasn't actually very tight to begin with, but assuming it is tight, then you just loosen it with a pair of pliers. I suppose if you've got a socket set, that would be even better. So there's a nut and a washer there. I'll just put them back on so I don't lose them. Let's bring them back onto the pitch control. Put that off to the side. Already been in here and established which of the screws attach the cassette transport to this metal plate. So I've drawn arrows towards the location of those screws with a red sharpie. You can see at the moment I've only got three of them in. So when you take this out, you want to have one hand on the transport so that it doesn't drop down onto these PCBs below it. Well, I'm okay at the moment because there's only, there's still two screws um, holding it in. Um, but maybe you can remove one, two, three, four. And then when you get to these last two, then you need to hold it up. But anyway, I'm taking my hand away to show you the screws. So they're wide ferrule. Like I say, I would usually expect to see narrow ferrule for screws going at the metal, but this manufacturer has decided to machine these for wide ferrule screws. It's quite short. Well, here's my cat, Willow. Come here. Come here. Little bugger, he always interrupts my videos, he never wants to be in it. I'd love to get his little furry face on camera, never mind. Okay, let's get those screws removed. That's just gonna lift out. You can see that. That's the belt that's coming from this reel and going off to the counter there. Let's get the camera set up again and we'll have a look at this transport. I've gone ahead and removed all the screws necessary to take this plate with the motor on it off of the transport. Most of these locations I've put red sharpie on so you can see there's four, one, two, three, four locations where I've removed tiny little screws with a washer on them and then there's this very slightly larger screw with no washer and that one Go through this little printed circuit board onto this bracket here. Uh, you can see for the purposes of reassembly, this bracket must go behind that printed circuit board and all of these holes. Sometimes I'll confuse myself when I'm trying to reassemble this and I'll put one plate outside the other when it should be inside. All three of these should go inside that plate like that. And from the front here, I've removed this plate. You can see that there were two screws here. 
little black ones like that, cosmetically a bit more camouflaged. Um, removing this gives you access to pulley on the take up wheel here. This is where the belt um, to the mechanical counter goes. If you recall earlier, we were looking at a white pulley which had a magnet on it. When you fit a fresh belt on that, you need to leave the belt dangling out like that so it can be hooked onto the pulley which is attached to the metal chassis separately. With those screws removed from this plate, you can let that dangle off to the side there. You can see all the leads to the motor go to this printed circuit board. Um, if I just turn that up that way, you can see that this motor is fitted with a double pulley. The lower convex part is for a flat belt, like so. That's sitting there. This belt will be going around this flywheel. And on the far side of that flywheel is the cap stand. Cap stands this metal rod here, so when this magnetic head assembly and this pinch roller is raised, the tape is trapped between the pinch roller, that's this rubber part here, and this cap stand, and that draws the tape across the magnetic heads at a steady speed. The turning of the take up reel, that's this reel, in um, playback and fast forward, and also the turning of the supply reel, that's this reel, in this direction, in rewind. That is driven by the other section of this brass pulley. You see there's a, just at the bottom there, space for this short belt. And so it runs, I can get it to hook on from there. And the other end of it goes around this black wheel here. So that wheel, you can see there's a cog there turning. I haven't completely taken this apart and looked at the intimers, but um, that will be what's driving the rotation of these reels. Also part of this flywheel capstan assembly, there's geared teeth. They interact with various cogs and gears here. And so depending what various solenoids are doing, I suspect this solenoid here is for auto stop, but I suspect these two green solenoids up here move shift arms and those shift arms will allow these cogs to interact with the teeth on the bottom of the flywheel and that will change mode and those mode changes will correspond to the raising and lowering of the magnetic heads and the pinch roller. So, you know, which solenoids are triggered and therefore which of these reels turns and whether or not these heads are retracted. And um, that's all happening in response to the user's push buttons on the front panel of the unit. And um, it's, you know, being handled by integrated circuits, um, which have got like a lot of logic gates in it, you know, not and, and, XOR, that kind of thing. I mean, stuff that would be very important to understand and a, a lot of detail if you're the designer, but um, well, we don't really need to understand that intimately in order to get it working again. That's roughly how it's working. Uh, while we're here, well, bashing the camera, you can see the brown wires are the ones of the recording playback head here. The erase head here is the one with the grey wires, because remember earlier when I was looking at the PCB, I wasn't sure which was which. I mean, I've actually tested the cassette a little bit, and apart from rewind, it was auto-stopping, which suggests that this counter belt was a bit dry and not catching that white pulley off to the side in rewind mode. The cassette player basically works well. So I'm probably not going to be deconstructing this any further. I've done a long series on the 244 transport, which is probably less complicated than this, and also on the GEC transport, which probably is as complicated as this. So, you know, the same mechanical principles, um, same principles of lubrication and so on are going to apply. So if you do need to take one of these apart, what we're looking at, you can see there's screws, springs with hook ends, e-clips. And if you take photos as you go along, keep things in compartment going in chronological order. So if that's the first thing you take off, then you put that in the first compartment, then you that removes this, and then you put that in the second compartment so that the order of things becomes a clue in how you reassemble it, then I'm sure you could go ahead and get in here and lubricate anything, identify any broken parts, any springs that have come off their hooks and so on, you could troubleshoot it. Um, but I won't be doing that because this seems to be working fine. Come back in a second once I've measured these belts so that you know what size to order if you're trying to get replacements. Okay, here's the belt dimensions for the area Studio Track 4 cap stand belt. The first one that is flat belt, 
it's about four millimeters wide, three millimeters would be fine. It's about a hundred millimeters in folded length. The one I've got here um, is functional. It's very slightly dry, so that's perhaps it's slightly stretched at length. So I would imagine that anything from ninety millimeters up would be okay. Not put too much strain on the motor. Next, we've got the real belt. That square in section, about one millimeters wide and about sixty millimeters in folded length. And last of all, we've got counter belt. The counter belt is about one millimeter square in cross section and it's about 95 millimeters in folded length. This one is dry and definitely going to be replaced, so perhaps 90 millimeters or less is what you want in order for there to be adequate tension on the pulley. If that isn't tight enough, or if it's absent, then the transport will start to work, but then auto stop will constantly be evoked because the counter isn't. What do I mean proceeding? There's a word for that. Oh, bugger if I can remember it just now. My vocabulary's normally pretty good. Anyway, you get the idea.